And welcome back to Black Renaissance. Getting a job in today's corporate world can prove to be a bit daunting for some West Oakland residents, including those who are on probation or parole. Restaurant owner Derek Johnson is here to discuss how he helps them re-enter the workforce. Welcome, Derek. Oh, thanks for having me. And you are uh, the owner of the House of Chicken and Waffles. Yes. Right there in Jack London Square. Yes. Such good chicken, such good waffles. Uh, we like that. <laughs> Love the nutmeg syrup. I'm not going to okay, lie. Like, okay. I have been there so many times and had it so many times. Um, but what I didn't know is that uh, part of uh, your purpose there and part of the way you run your business there is uh, by hiring, what, a quarter of your employees there are ex-offenders? Right. Yeah, currently about 25% of our workforce is uh, on parole or probation. And mm -hmm. um, so part of my give back, I'm, I'm a product of West Oakland, mm -hmm. um, born and raised. And so I felt it was a need to definitely open the doors and give opportunities for those that are fortunate and also that just cannot get a job. Um, having a felony on your record, it's, it's impossible. I Absolutely. mean, they get, they get no, they don't even get the chance to get an interview. So, um, so I found it to be a very successful um, and a way to feel, as I'm always having openings. Yeah. <laughs> In the restaurant business, we have high turnover, but Absolutely. I've done well. I mean, we retain, um, uh, an astonishing 80 to 85 percent of the people that have started with us on parole or probation, either they're still employed with us or they've gone on to have uh, careers actually in mm -hmm. the hospitality or in other fields. So that's good. It's a good feeling. So Very in a lot good. of ways, you're sort of acting as as a launch pad for them when they're coming out and they're on parole or probation. Yes, and um, and currently working with the Oakland Rotary um, to really establish a program with other employers to get them involved because when unemployment is high, crime is high. So we have kind of have a direct correlation that if we can reduce unemployment, especially with this population, those that, that have been identified already to create, you know, a lot of crime and, and, and it's going on in the city, it helps out. Um, so that's what we're doing. Um, it's not an easy yeah. task because uh, a lot of people, when they come in, they really have no soft skills as far as, it's not, a lot of them have never had a job before. So it's... it's challenging in the beginning, but we kind of, we, we work through that. You, you, well, <laughs> we you, give a lot of second and third chances. There you go. Well, sometimes you have to do that. Yeah. Uh, but well, tell me a little bit about your backstory. How did you decide that this was something that you were passionate about or that it, it would fit into your business model somehow? How did we get to this point? Well, years ago, my first business, I owned a car wash um, facilities around the Bay Area. I had five locations and I just got in a bind and needed um, some employees one day and mm -hmm. one of my employees came up who actually did not know it was on parole or probation and said, you know, I can call the house and get some more people and I didn't really know what called the house meant. I was right. like, all right, we'll call the house and bring, do what bring, you have yeah, to do. And bring them in. <laughs> so the house was actually a halfway house and okay. the director of the house, Kevin Grant, who is now over Measure Y for City of Oakland, I met him, that was about 20 years ago okay. and we have just kept a relationship going and I've been hiring ever since. And it's actually turned out to be, um, like I said earlier, just positive. I mean, there's problems, um, and not everyone has worked out, but majority of the people have. And they've turned out to be like some of the most loyal employees that I've had because no one would give them a chance. So it's it's, it's worked out. You That's know, incredible. Pretty uh, good. You and it, you're having a direct impact on. I mean, we talk a lot about uh, you know recidivism and you know people coming out of prison or jail and then going right back in because they don't have those opportunities. Does right. it feel like you're having a direct impact? Oh, on that definitely. Very I mean, problem? I think what you asked me what motivates me to continue to do it. Um, mm -hmm. Just watching someone receive their very first paycheck. I remember I had an employee, this guy named Theo, who. We gave him a check, and I actually gave him the check, and he started crying. I was like, okay, well, what? Aww. i never seen that. What, what are you? And I didn't know. I was like, what are you crying for? <laughs> Usually people happy when What's they get a check. What's going on here? He was like, you know, because he had been locked up for about 15, 16 years. Wow. He said, I've never received a legal paycheck before. And I was like, oh, wow. wow. So those kind of things. Watching people get their first check, get their first apartment, their first car, that, that really motivated me to expand and offer more positions within my business. Uh, and is now really motivating me to reach out with other employers to see if we can set up, trying to get some kind of scalable model. Because our model's not, you know, it, it, our model's probably not what most people can do. I mean, we, uh -huh. we, I mean, it probably works in our environment at the restaurant because uh, it's very much a, you know, we teach one as they come in. So right. when one's It takes some time and some patience. It does. It takes some time because um, there's a lot of social, like in their personal lives, they have a lot of personal issues that are going on that mm -hmm. you that normally employers don't deal with that in the workforce. But right. we sometimes have to take that on. Um, 
and we, we deal with them probably in a way that most I wouldn't recommend for other employers too, but it's worked. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm just continuing to hopefully open the doors for those that are in need and um, you know, You'd just like to see other businesses follow definitely, that lead as definitely, well. Definitely, definitely, because I, I think, you know, it, like I said earlier, it's been a direct correlation when crime, when people are employed, crime is, you know, goes down. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of people, and I think the general population thinks as a criminal or someone that commits crime, like, they're a bad people or they really right. just are crazy. And, and a lot of times it really is just survival. I mean, it's, it's out of desperation. really, really tough for people to get a job. I mean, yeah. it's very hard. Yeah. Absolutely. You guys have you. This is not the only good work that you're doing. You've also got a big event coming up for the holidays. Here. Yes. Every Christmas we open the doors. Um, this year, from 10 a.m. to noon, we're feeding those in need to come in. You just walk in the door, and we'll we'll feed you um, for two hours on Christmas Day, and that's that's very fulfilling. That must be really yeah, rewarding just very. to be able to hand out a meal and people sit there and have yes. like a real Christmas yes, dinner. Yes, like they're in a restaurant setting. So that's that's what we, it's, it's nice. It's very nice. And that's on Christmas Day? On Christmas Day. We partner with the Center of Hope Church um, in Oakland and volunteers come in. They can come in and hand out food. They can volunteer food, anything prepared, prepared already prepared, ready to eat. Um, and that's what we do. Fantastic. Keep up yes. the good work. Right, You're doing well, great you. things. Thank you so much. <laughs> For more information about Home of Chicken and Waffles, go to homeofchickenandwaffles.com. That's homeofchickenandwaffles.com. That's it for us. Thanks for joining us. Remember, please like us on Facebook and watch us on KBCW.